On almost the furthest outskirts of Boise, Idaho, is a small town called Fruitland, a place that gets its name from the many apple orchards littered throughout the farmland, inhabited by a warm and tight-knit community of only about 6,500 people. Those of us living outside of America could be forgiven for not really being able to pinpoint Fruitland on a map, but over the last year it has become an internationally known name, and the reasons behind that have very little to do with fruit orchards. On July the 27th, 2021, Brandy Neal woke up to go to work, thanking her luck that it was the last day that she would have to work before she had a few days off that she could spend at home and she had every reason to want to be at home that day. It was summer, and her five-year-old son, Michael, was home, spending his days playing outside in the fresh air and the sunshine, having a great time. Michael was full of energy and fun, so much that Brandy nicknamed him Monkey, and she had a hard time leaving her son that day. Brandy's husband and Michael's father, Tyler Vaughn, was going to be home looking after him, but Brandy had been working quite a few days in a row and hadn't had any time off to spend with her son. She wanted to and was looking forward to it, she just had to make it through her last day and then she could relax and be with him. So Brandy kissed Michael goodbye that morning, promised him that she'd have a few days off to see him and play games with him and they'd start as soon as she got off work that evening. She called home at around 4pm, checking in with Michael and Tyler, who told her that Michael was playing video games, and Brandy hung up, now looking forward to getting home more than ever, but only a few hours later and she'd get a call that would turn her whole world upside down. A little while after she'd called home, Tyler had gone into the kitchen to start making dinner, leaving Michael on his own to keep playing his video games, but when Tyler came back, Michael was gone. Tyler didn't panic at first. Michael loved to be outside, so it wasn't anything unusual for him not to stay in the one spot for too long. But Michael wasn't out in the garden either. Tyler kept it together, but once he realised that Michael wasn't anywhere on the property, he knew that something was wrong, and Michael was missing. Tyler immediately called the police, who also called Brandy to let her know what was going on, and they started the search, combing the neighbourhood and desperately trying to find a child who was only five years old. They quickly found CCTV footage of Tyler, taken from around 6pm, where he's seen wearing a blue Minecraft t-shirt, blue shorts and flip-flops, and knocking on a few doors around the neighbourhood. He stopped by houses where he knew the people inside, and so the theory that he'd gone out on his own looking for his friends to play with was the leading theory in this case, but unfortunately, it wasn't for long. Very early in the investigation, investigators locked onto the idea that Michael had been abducted, and it was a hard one to shake. It was a small neighbourhood, and he'd knocked on three doors before investigators lost track of him. Chances are that someone who knew him would have spotted him and brought him home, especially if he kept knocking on friends' houses. Eventually, someone would have answered and realised that he was out on his own, and his parents didn't know where he was, unless someone had picked him up and taken him somewhere else entirely. Thinking the worst, the investigators reached out to whoever they could, trying to find out anything and everything about Michael and where he possibly could have gone, but to his family's and the community's horror, the leads kept coming up short. June 2022 marked his sixth birthday, with no real breaks or leads, and by July he'd been missing for a whole year, and things weren't looking any better. But finally, and recently, the investigators got a lead that blew this whole case wide open, and they retrieved it from a very unlikely place. Because Michael had been knocking on doors around the neighbourhood and the police believed that there was a possibility that he'd been abducted, they'd been keeping a close eye on the neighbours in the area, but it was actually one of the neighbours themselves who put themselves and their home on the investigators' radars to begin with. 
A neighbour living on a property about a four minute walk away from Michael's home posted a video on TikTok where she was walking through her kitchen and the people watching it noticed something rather unusual. On the woman's fridge was one of Michael's missing persons posters, something that was more than a little unusual for someone who didn't know him to keep up on their fridge over a year after the boy had first gone missing. The woman was arrested in connection with the boy's disappearance in November 2022, but for many, this wasn't exactly the hopeful break in the case that they'd been holding out for, because very shortly after the arrest, investigators started digging up a lot near to her property and sifting through the dirt. But why did they decide to start digging up on a property that didn't even belong to her, and who was this woman? Sarah Wandra is a 35-year-old woman living with her husband, Stacey Wandra, on a property near the one the police are still currently searching. Both have been arrested but not charged for Michael's disappearance or even his abduction, but with failing to notify authorities about a death. Something that would make their stomachs drop for any parent hoping to hear good news about their missing child. Sarah was arraigned in early November where she told the judge that she wasn't guilty of the charges that had been brought against her and that she didn't quote unquote have any reason to be silent because she didn't do anything wrong. But if she is found guilty, the charge for concealing a manner of death can lead to a sentence of up to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to $50,000. Because this case is still an open investigation, very little official information has been released to the public, but her arrest did set in motion a chain of events that would have devastating implications for those hoping to see Michael returned home safely. Very shortly after starting this dig, authorities went over to Brandy and Tyler's home to tell them what was going on. They said that they had a tip that they considered to be very credible and that the tip had told them to be looking for Michael's remains, not a missing person. But whether it was this tip or whether it was Sarah had said to officers during her arrest is also up for speculation and the answer for that probably won't be revealed until much later. According to the official affidavit submitted to court when Sarah was being arrested, she didn't have much of a reaction to the police reading out her charges until they came to the part where they mentioned murder. According to officers who'd been at the scene, Sarah had then asked, quote, Did you just say murder? I have never murdered anyone. I definitely didn't kill that boy. The Most High God already told me who did it. Oh wow. Wow, the Most High God just told me that Stacy was the one who killed him and buried him in the yard. She then went on to say that Stacy had just told her that Michael was buried in the neighbor's yard, which she then corrected to be that it was the quote unquote Most High God who had told her that Michael was in the yard. Whether it was this tip that had been the reason behind the dig or just the last thing that the police had needed to hear to start looking for Michael in the yard, the dig began almost immediately, with investigators using their bare hands to comb through the yard until the team could arrive. But so far, the dig has been long and disheartening. Speaking about it to the press about it later, Fruitland Police Chief J.D. Huff said, we have not found anything yet, but we will continue to excavate in the hopes of finding his remains. But that's not the only place they're looking for Michael, or the only lead they're still chasing up. After going through almost 1,000 leads so far, the investigators are still looking for one man in particular that they haven't been able to trace. The man, believed to be somewhere between his 20s and 30s and wearing black shorts, a white sleeveless t-shirt and black shoes and a hat, was caught on CCTV, walking through Crestview Park around the time that Michael disappeared. The police have not named him as a suspect, but they want to speak with him in the hopes that he may have seen something of interest to the case and could point them in the right direction. They are also looking for a white Honda Pilot that was seen in the neighbourhood around the same time and are hoping that the $26,000 reward for any information that leads to Michael being brought home will encourage people to come forward with more leads. But perhaps the most compelling words that anyone would ever need to hear to know that coming forward is the right thing to do came from Michael's parents themselves. Speaking about their son to the press, they said, He's coming home and we're waiting for him. We're all waiting for him. 
Every single one of us are waiting for him and we're going to bring him home. He's beyond missed and beyond loved and we need him. We need him. Thank you.